Morton Bay on the eastern coast of Australia. Harbors a rich and diverse ecosystem. Beds of seagrass stretch over miles, providing the foundation for fish, marine mammals, and some truly ancient mariners. Protected areas like Morton Bay seem like safe havens for these ancient reptiles. But increasingly, this sanctuary is under siege from an even more ancient life form. Wow, look at that. One that Dr. Judy O'Neill knows all too well. Now here's a piece that was growing straight out of the sediment once it pulls up and it just rolls and rolls around and then you have this sort of yarny mass. What looks like a piece of seagrass is an epic scourge in Morton Bay. A species of blue-green algae. Its scientific name is Lingbia majuscula, and it flourished 2.7 billion years ago. It emerged from the primordial ooze that begat all life. Now, it's making a comeback in Morton Bay and many other places. And it grows at astonishing rates. At the height of a bloom, its edge can cover an area the size of a football field in an hour. Dr. Karen Arthur has observed the invasion of fireweed in Morton Bay. We've had extensive blooms of uh, lingvia for the past six or seven years, and they have become fairly predictable because they occur every year in the summertime. Um, it is related to water temperature. Uh, the warmer waters allow the cyanobacteria to grow and, and bloom all across the seagrass beds. Green turtles have long been thought to be the vegetarians in the turtle world. But when fireweed infests the local salad bar, much a veggie-loving turtle to do. To find out, Karen and Judy want to learn more about how green turtles in Morton Bay find food. They join forces with National Geographic's Greg Marshall. Greg has brought Critter Camp a small imaging and data logging system that can be deployed on marine creatures to study what they eat. But before you can deploy Critter Camp, you have to catch a turtle. And they can be hard to find. Spending most of their time below the surface, they only come up occasionally for air. And that's the time to strike. Karen Arthur is a pro turtle rodeo. And this time, she's got a whopper, a big, healthy female. The turtle is weighed and measured. 107.9. She looks big and strong, so she doesn't seem to be going hungry. Greg cleans her shell, so Critter Camp can be attached with a suction cup. We're good to go. It's a quick deployment. Then the turtle is released back into the bay. The team can track Critter Camp's homing beacon with a radio receiver. At a preset time, the system releases. Hopefully it contains information on how green turtles manage to make a living in Morton Bay. I'm all safe and sound. The turtle swims rapidly after release only surfacing quickly to breathe. She passes by a shovel-nosed shark, a fairly harmless local. Fish swim by, but don't seem to strike her interest. Then, something catches her attention. It's another turtle. They meet and greet, and after a quick bit of socializing, it's time to move on. The team watches as she settles on the ocean floor. In front of her is a patch of seagrass. Not the freshest looking greens, but free of fireweed. She takes a bite, then settles in for a rest. Green turtles don't have swallowing muscles, so the green ooze that's coming from her mouth and nostril is backwashed from the salt water she drinks to force the seaweed down her throat. As she swims toward the surface, 
The team is surprised to see her snap up a jellyfish. The grass-eating turtle does seem to occasionally dine on more hardy fare. These are first insights that supplement Karen's initial findings. We found that the turtles are trying to avoid the areas where there is a lot of lingvia. So if there's lingvia growing on their seagrass, then they actually avoid the seagrass where the lingvia is and they'll swim to areas where perhaps the seagrass isn't as nutritious and isn't as good for them. And so it means that they're getting a substandard diet when there is an extensive bloom. They don't have as, as much choice of the, the really nice juicy leaves that they might sometimes want to eat. The Critter Cam shows that green turtles have some tricks up their sleeves. Their palate is more diverse than previously thought. And with a side of jelly, they may be able to make do when the local salad bar is closed. It remains to be seen if fireweed will impact the comeback of the endangered green turtle in Morton Bay. But the team will be back to do what they can to protect it from the rise of slime. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs, taking science and exploration into the new millennium.